Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. We have none other than Ronnie Dawson uh, from Texas, and this man has a bet sphere. Well, I don't know if you have it, do you, Ronnie, um, at the moment? You don't have it with you. Uh, I'm, I'm friends with the guy who's in possession of it. It's behind locked gates over down here in north central Texas and uh, highly guarded. Right. I have seen the video footage. Uh, which we will be playing with your kind permission. Um, but I want to know, um, I want to go way back and start off with what got you into ufology and just tell us a little bit about yourself, Ronnie. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, like I said, I was sort of a skeptic, and, and you know, because I heard about all these UFO sightings, but I'd never seen anything. I work in the oil field and I work nights all night long sometimes nine months at a time out in the middle of nowhere and I am not seeing anything. So, I, you know, I was quite skeptical of the whole ufology thing there for a long time until it just hit me in the face <laughs> about 2009. Uh, and it, it, I just seen some stuff out there that I couldn't deny that there was, there was no explaining it through common logic. Uh, I mean, I, I've plane spot, I've seen the uh, space shuttles come in for landings and, and uh, I've seen the ISS flyovers, and, you know, I know what's up there and, and what, and then I've seen some stuff that you just can't explain. And, and when I started seeing that kind of stuff, it had to, I had to open my mind up and say, oh, man, you know, I don't know what this is, but it's, it's probably not ours. So, and, it, and it wasn't. So what was the first instant when you kind of looked at something or thought, hang about, there's something not quite right here? Well, I, I was working out here in the Texas oil fields in north central Texas, uh, hauling crude oil to the, the crude oil delivery stations at night. And uh, I was seeing a lot of lights over the trees moving around. And I, out in the middle of nowhere, where there's no, not a house anywhere near there. there would, and, I'm, you know, I'm a drone pilot and I'm an RC pilot. And, and it's so heavily wooded, you wouldn't dare try, any, try to fly anything out there at night unless you just really wanted to lose it. And uh, there's just no explaining what this stuff was flying around over the trees, you know, at, at this time of the night with nobody around. And, uh, and then uh, I was driving down the highway and I seen a series of lights and three of them broke off and went over to a field. It shot a dark blue beam down to the ground. And, uh, and as I was driving down the highway in my truck looking at this whole thing, trying to find a camera of some sort to get a picture, I looked at... I looked in the blue light, and about 30 feet off the ground, there was a cow, and it and it was it was shaking its head from left to right, and it, and it scared the hell out of me, and, and it really woke me up to the fact that these were just mystery lights. But now, for the first time, I realized that these are are UFO craft, and uh, they're not from around here, and it's certainly not military or anything like that. Because this thing broke off, it probably traveled a mile. It dropped a beam down to the ground. It had a cow sucked up 30 feet in the air. And it did this all probably within about 60 to 90 seconds. You know, there's no helicopter that could go over there and harpoon a cow and suck it up that quick. You know, so it just is impossible to explain other than it has to be ET. So, so, so this, you actually saw a cow leave the ground? I didn't see the cow leave the ground, but I seen the light. The blue, I seen the blue beam of light from the craft shining down on a field about a quarter mile away. And then inside the blue beam, there was something moving. And as I got closer to it, and I, I, I trying to figure out what it was, I seen a cow, and it was whipping its head from left to right, about 30 feet up. And, it, and that scared the hell out of me, really. I just At that point, I just wanted to get the heck out of there before I was next. Did you stop the truck? I was going to stop the truck until I seen the cow. And then I thought, well, you know, I'd just be lining up to be next, you know. So I, I just uh, tucked and ran. I just kept driving, and uh, I didn't even want to look in the mirrors to see that. I was afraid they'd be following me or something. So what year I was got What year was this? Uh, this was uh, in this was about two thousand and nine. Right. Okay. Um, and, and was there any sort of reports of missing cows? No, I, I didn't see anything like that. You know, I don't know. Uh, 
and I go through that same area and I was looking to see if there's any buzzards around because uh, like I said something dies around here we have buzzards and anyway uh, I didn't see any buzzards so I don't know if they put the cow back or if they just took the cow and they never came back and just turned it missing or or what happened you know it always seems to be the cows they get that they get such a, a you know they get picked on by these extraterrestrials so you know why, why not something different other than a cow you know well, you know i've heard yeah there's a there was a guy around here that was telling me about the deer he said there was a they had a game cam and a, and a ufo showed up in it and there was a light and all the deer just disappeared there was like four deer in the video and then they just vanished so it was like they may have taken deer as well so that's your your first experience but how many experiences have you i know you've had some close to home um because I've been watching your uh, YouTube channel. Oh yeah, it just and it kept on. It was like you couldn't go out there at night without seeing something. Uh, I mean, I had a, a MUFON investigator come out and uh, he said, "Man, I, I, you, you're sending so many reports over here. We decided to come out and check it out." So he spent three days just at, in the, sleeping in his pickup, driving around the area. And he called me up one night. He goes, "He goes, I just had a light just move. It traveled right over the top of my head." He said, I have no idea what it was, but, you know, it just passed right over me. I said, that's, yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing out here, you know, is these lights moving around the trees. Oh, so the, you know? the MUFON guy said he saw something as well? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What, while he was at your place? Yeah, well, he was in the same area. He traveled down to the same area that I was following most of the reports on. Okay, got you. And it's, uh, where, where's this area? It's, it's south of Cisco, Texas, between a little town of Rising Star. It's about a 20-mile stretch there. And I, and I talked to a lot of the farmers and stuff around there, and they and just about everybody down there has seen the lights and the, the mysterious lights. That, and, of course, a lot of people try to say it's, it's helico helicopter training exercises and all sorts of stuff. Everybody's got their own excuse to what they think it is. Uh, but everybody down there was, was seeing it at that time so and yeah and the experience just you know it didn't go away it just it just got more intense really i know i asked you before but do have any of the farmers complained about missing livestock you know i these guys these guys you know the guys that i've talked to you know they've you know they if they if they find dead cattle they you know they i don't know they don't really think of it being an, as an abduction they just think that you know he got sick and died or something like that so you know as far as uh you know saying it's a cattle abduction or whatever i don't think that even these are the kind of guys that probably wouldn't even report it you know okay. they just think something happened or whatever and the cow died you know these are old old school guys man i mean they don't believe in ufos and if they found a dead cow they they just think the coyotes or something got a hold of it and they probably wouldn't even report it Right. Okay. I, I I get that. I get that because the it's the same in England. Um, you know that people f see livestock there. I I know some farmers and um, they they get livestock that die, and they just think that some wild animals has come in and killed it, which is possible. Oh, yeah. Um. But yeah. I I didn't know if they'd seen any with any telltale strange uh, marks or cuts on them that look quite precision. You know, straight and Yeah, I've, I've never seen any official reports to that nature, and I don't think it happens a whole lot around here like it does other places. Uh, but this particular cow, I you know, and it, it's a mystery as to what happened to it. I, I don't know if it died. I don't know if it disappeared. You know, I looked to see if there was a carcass out there because I traveled through that same area. I never saw the, I never saw a carcass like they had put it back down and where they had dropped it or whatever. I never saw a carcass or any buzzards or anything like that. So I don't know if they just took it, if it turned up missing, or or if they just replaced it, put it back unharmed. Who knows? Are you um are you scared of these um sightings? I know you said you were scared yeah, of the it, first one. Yeah, the first one it shook me up pretty bad, but I mean not so bad that you know I'm a hazmat crudo driver, so. It ain't like I could go call the police and file an official report, man. You know, and that's the frustrating part is, is uh, you know, when my job is kind of, 
you know, I have to go through the same rigid physical background checks and mental evaluations and all that stuff as airline pilots do. And in fact, I get my DOT physicals with airline pilots. So, you know, I can't just call the police and say I seen UFOs and cows being abducted without uh, drawing really, you know, drawing myself into question as to am I on drugs or they need to pull my license until they figure out what's going on with me, you know. So, I. There's there's been a couple of instances where I'd love to have called the police and got tried to get some physical evidence and and you know confirm some stuff, but uh, weren't able to do so because I have a career that'd be in jeopardy of it. Okay, yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, I wouldn't want to lose uh, my livelihood over saying yeah. something that could get me into a lot of trouble. Um, yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. You you. Family I mean, man, yeah, responsible. Ever come across an alien corpse? I, you know, I, I don't mind calling the police at all. You know, yeah, and say I've got an alien corpse over here. But if you know, if I ain't got some hard physical evidence to to back up what I'm claiming, you know, I better I'd be better off just not saying anything. Unfortunately. Yeah, I I noticed some of the videos that that you've done, um, and it's almost like, almost like something's happened close to home. I saw, I saw the burnt. Um, plants that look burnt, um, but they weren't burnt. It was like some sort of weird. Uh, and the attic. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, when you're a, when you're a UFO experiencer and an alien contactee, you get kind of get pulled into ufology, and 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 and, and that's kind of how the sphere came in uh, came into contact with me. I had a UFO sight and a mile a mile from where this guy lives that has this ufo sphere and uh because he's seen my sighting on youtube he contacted me and the burnt plants you're talking about is a lady in in florida who had a had a ufo sighting and she went out to the area where she seen it and the plants were burned up and she sent me some of the plants that were that were burned up you know so, but i'm not a scientist and i'm not you know i wish i was better at that kind of stuff but i'm mainly an experiencer uh, but I, I'm in contact with a lot, a lot of people who've seen stuff because they know I'm not going to be so critical as as somebody would that who's never had any kind of experience like this. So you kind of get pulled into ufology, really. So she sent you the plants. Yeah, she sent me a sample of the plants. Were you not scared about opening that up and touching? Uh, we we I kind of did some radiation check on it. You know, as, how did you do that? It, uh, I have a, like a rate of, you can turn your cell phone into, uh, it's a little device that goes into my cell phone and it checks the radiation. And I did that with the sphere too. Right. Okay. Uh, it turned, basically turns your, your smartphone into uh, a Geiger counter. You I know? need one of those. I need yeah, one. It's cool. It's pretty cool. And they're not, they're not that expensive. I think they're like 20 bucks or something like that. And it actually works. Yeah. 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 So, so, what sort of radiation levels were coming off these plants? It it had just a light radiation. It wasn't nothing dangerous, you know. Right. Just uh, really nothing significant. And uh, the plants were like burned up. And uh, you know, I don't really know if it was what killed the plants exactly, but uh, we never did never did quite figure that out. I you know I sent some off to the institute, but they never got back with me on any results. I, they may not even even looked at it you know i'm i've been pretty frustrated trying to get people that you know yeah. do some researching on this stuff man that's the bit that impresses me that you have asked people to analyze this sphere you've oh, asked, yeah. you you want you want um a somebody to see if they can look inside it right yeah we're just we're just trying to get some simple x-ray done with the uh, we'd like to get a pipeline uh, x-ray unit mobile unit to come out to the location where the sphere is being capped and these guys x-ray pipeline wells and so they can uh, x-ray uh, stuff up to uh, about two inches thick really and so you know we could get one of these trucks out there and, and just because i don't know for a fact that it's a ufo sphere I, i've seen enough to know that this thing is it's not something that can, can it be easily explainable it's not something from uh, from a machinist standpoint. I have, I've showed it to some machinists, and they said, you know, from the time that this thing was found, they didn't really have plasma cutters and stuff like that to cut this kind of a stuff out of a 
piece of metal like this, especially not at that thickness. Okay. And uh, okay, with, you know, with with the sphere, uh, and I know you've been in contact with to the Stars Academy uh, of Arts and Science. Uh, do you mind if I show a clip of what they sent back? No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So you so. The fact that you've been in touch with them and you want them to come and see this tells me you're legit. Um, and I normally get a feeling for people. Um, so, because Lou's a big guy, you know. Lou is a oh, big yeah. guy. If he comes to your house and that is not, you know, you've, 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 yeah. you've, you've, you've made this sphere, you, you know, <laughs> right. there's going to be some bruising. <laughs> right, right. No, I'm just I... winding you up. Um, no, I, I respect ufology not not an, enough not to try to host anything. And I know that the people in ufology are, are incredibly smart, and they're not stupid, and they're not you're not going to dupe them with some kind of phony crap like that. You know, I, I've and I've had to work hard for the UFO evidence that I gathered, and uh, and I have been attacked from every angle. So I know that if you're going to present some evidence, you better have you better have your ducks in order. Or they're gonna tear you apart, you know. So, yeah. and there's no way I respect uh, to the Stars Academy enough, and anybody who wants to, you know, to, to pr try to prove that UFOs are be are visiting us, and we have some some real meta material to be investigated. I'm kind of frustrated that they haven't jumped on this because it, uh, you know, if you're really in a research of metal material, and somebody comes to you and says, "Man, you know, I got the mother load of metal material here." You might want to take a look at it, and then they don't talk to you. They don't respond to you, and it's like, are you really looking for meta material, or are you just saying you're looking for meta material? Mm. Or maybe you have so much meta material that you don't need mine. Uh, you know, so it's it's been pretty frustrating, really. And I've kind of bad mouth to the Stars Academy over this on some podcasts and stuff, and uh, and then maybe they're just really slow on getting back with you. <laughs> I don't know. So now I'm kind of having to backtrack and say, I apologize for being saying some crude things about you. But for a long time there, I put the evidence out there and nobody responded. And it looked like I was being ignored, you know. So Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Can you, can we reverse uh, a little bit? Because I want to know the actual story behind, and I'm sure the viewers want to know the story behind the spheres. Because there's more than one. I believe there's 12 of them. And I want to know from start to finish how you ended up with it and the story behind it okay well like i said i had a you i had a one of one of the UFO, and i've been working hard to get some footage move on was is you know challenged me to get some video footage and it's and it's it's really hard because some of the ufos i've seen you pull your camera up to get a picture of it and then it just blinks out so it's almost like they're you're watching the ufo but they're watching you back as soon as I grab my electronics, the thing just blinks out. So it's been really frustrating trying to get some some photographic evidence of what I've been seeing out there at night. Uh, but I managed to catch some a mile down the road from where this guy lives at, near Santa Ana, Texas, and I caught some mysterious UFO lights that put on quite a show for me. And I got it on my YouTube channel, the Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel, and it, and it's called uh, Santa Ana Mystery Lights recorded or something something to that extent and you can go there and see that but anyway they seen that video and, and they said you got to talk to this guy jim marlin he's a ufo experience himself and he's had tons of experiences and uh, they said you gotta meet him and, and i thought yeah you know i'd be interested in meeting him and see what he's seen because he lives in that area what's so he called again I, jim it's jim marlin yeah right okay. and and uh, I got to go. I got to go down and meet Jim Marlin. And, and Jim Marlin, he's he's retired. But what Jim Marlin used to do, he he is a uh, he was a producer for uh, oh he he was a concert producer for Bob Dylan. And he worked. He produced concerts for Willie Nelson. And uh, and this guy, man, he's had all sorts of. He's had a heck of a life, and he's got all pictures of him and uh, Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan and. And Joe Crocker <laughs> and Dolly Parton all over his wow. walls of his house, man. I'm going, wow, this guy's, you know, this guy lived a hell of a life. He's pretty famous. But he was like Willie Nelson's Willie Nelson's UFO guy, you know. And him and the band would get into arguments after concerts and stuff like that because some of the band members uh, were 
didn't believe in UFOs, and Jim Marlin has had UFO experiences and alien experiences his whole life. So they would get into these arguments. And anyway, one, one night, Willie Nelson uh, said, let me just put an end to this damn argument. And uh, Willie Nelson broke out his phone. Well, Jimmy Carter had made the mistake of giving Willie Nelson his phone. So it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning. Willie Nelson calls the number that Jimmy Carter gave him. And and he and and the phone is ringing at two o'clock in the morning. Well, the president of the United States answers the phone at two o'clock in the morning, and this is that everybody's drinking, everybody's at the back of a concert, and uh, Jimmy Carter answers the phone, and Willie Nelson says, says Jimmy said, I, I'm really sorry to bother you at this hour. He goes, but some of the boys here are having an argument over UFOs and aliens, and he said, he said I got tired of listening to it. He said I just want to go straight to the source and ask you straight out, do you know anything about that? And Jimmy Carter told Willie Nelson right there, he said, he said, yeah, he said, UFO, he said, aliens do exist, and he said, UFOs do exist, and alien, and aliens do exist, and he said, they won't let me say a damn thing about it. And that's what he told <laughs> Willie Nelson right there. What, what year was this? Oh, man, this had to be back. This was right, because then, after talking to Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter made Willie Nelson go to the White House and do a show. So... But Jim Marlin didn't get to go to the show because he was he was getting ready to put on the Willie Nelson picnic down right. there. So it was the second Willie Nelson picnic. It was the first one I think in Lukenbach, Texas, right. down there. So, but I went down and visited Jim Marlin at his house, you know, and I was like amazed. And Jim Marlin has some amazing stories, man. I mean, oh my God, this amazing stories. But he's he's like in his seventies. He doesn't. He's having, he has a hard time talking and uh, and he can't hardly hear and so it's you know he doesn't like to really do radio shows so uh, I've, I've been there talking to him and uh, listening to his stories and stuff and then he has his damn ball sitting over there and he said well you know this damn uh, ball came off of UFO and I'm going well, now hold on Jim I said you've got physical evidence of a UFO <laughs> right here at your house and he goes yeah this ball right here came off a ufo and, and i said well what's the story on that jim and he's and jim told me he said you know i said said he was living in Taos, new mexico he was a ufo guy over there he's the guy you call if you want to talk ufos and so this this guy that had worked with him and this guy was an actual bodyguard they had used him as a bodyguard on some of the concerts and stuff big huge mean guy and he owns a million dollar ranch out in the middle of nowhere out in Taos, New Mexico. And uh, they had, so he knew Jim's phone number. He knew Jim's a UFO guy. Well, he called Jim one morning. He's all frantic, you know, going, Jim, he goes, he goes, I need you to come out. I need to talk to you. And so Jim made a trip out to his place out in his ranch. And he drove down there. And this place is not near a highway or anything like that where it could have rolled off a truck. This is like behind, you know, behind gates off off the ways out in the middle of the pasture somewhere where his house is at and, and Jim went up there and there's all these metal balls laying out in his nice manicured front lawn and Jim was looking at him thinking well that's that's strange you know and a guy come out and he goes Jim he goes last night he said a big old huge UFO came over here and hovered over our house for quite a while he said it scared the hell out of us he said we were just, we were scared to death they were going to come in and coming in after us he said we locked all the doors and we hid and he said, finally, the thing just disappeared. He said, when we had the courage to come out the next morning, he said, all these fears are laying on the lawn. And Jim said, you know, that's, he said, man, that's the craziest story I've ever seen. You know, and he said, what? He said, uh, he said, do you mind if I have one? And he said, yeah, Jim. He said, you can, he said, there's like 12 of them. He said, you can have one. And so he let Jim take one. And anyway, Jim said he, that he had it, and he said that he used to give the, these monks, these Buddhist monks up there, rides to town where he lived from. They, they didn't have a vehicle. They walked everywhere, and they would, he would give them a ride into town. So, sorry, so sorry, Ronnie, do you know people, roughly, sorry to interrupt, but do you know roughly what year it was that this, um, you know when it was that this sighting happened with the spheres left on the garden? I've been trying to nail down uh, an exact timeline, but I'm thinking Rough. it has to be, good God, 20, 20 to 30 years ago. This okay. is a long time ago. So we're talking like maybe maybe 80s, yeah? Yeah, probably. Man, yeah. Like okay. Probably back in the 80s, 90s, somewhere around there, maybe. Cool. Sorry, carry yeah, on. So you, were talk, you were saying about the monks. 
Yeah, the monks were fascinated by it. They said they could see an ore being produced by it. And, and they were asking Jim if they could take it and send it to the Dalai Lama. They were so intrigued by it. And uh, Jim said he didn't want to get rid of it. He wanted to keep it. But they, they would come by from time to time and pray over it and look at it and, and uh, show each other it, you know. So, and anyway, so Jim, uh, he, said, he said one day the guy come back over and he was like, he came back over to Jim's house and he was demanding it back. And uh, this is the guy that ha- that that gave Jim the ball, the sphere. Yeah, yeah, the guy that gave him the ball. See, because because I've been wondering, you know, people have been asking me where are the rest of the spheres at, and I was trying to get the backstory on where the spheres at. So I've been pressing Jim to tell me about where the rest of them are at, what's going on with the rest of them, and uh, and anyway, come to find out, this I guess him and the guy are on bad terms. The guy come back over was demanding the sphere back. And uh, Jim was there with a with an Indian guy that he was friends with, and he goes, "No," he said, "You give it to Jim, and Jim don't want to give it back." He said, "So you just need to leave." And uh, and so the the guy left. You know, he just he thought they were just metal. You know, he wouldn't. I guess maybe he figured out that they were more than what he first thought they were. And I don't know, have no idea what happened to the rest of the spheres. I'm sure Jim knows the guy's name, and uh, it's probably be possible, maybe to. For a third party or something like that to try to contact the guy and find out where the rest of them are at. Uh, but Jim's got this one. He's had it for, and he's he doesn't want to let go of it. Uh, Daryl Sims, the alien hunter down in Houston, ha- has offered to do some testing on it at the University of Houston, but he wants Jim to just release the sphere to him uh, for several weeks so they can do research on it. Well, you know what happened to the bet sphere when he yeah. when they so he didn't want. Well, that's because, that that's because they released yeah. it to the Navy. Right, yeah. So they either messed it up or swapped it out or or it was damaged during their testing. I, uh, nobody really knows what happened to it for sure, but uh, they said it wasn't ever the same once they got it back. And so Jim doesn't want to just give it to somebody. He, did, he just doesn't want to let go of it and let somebody go running off with it. And, and that's the reason he's had it for as long as he has, is he just he don't let people run around with it. Right, so kind of, that's I was kind of under the understanding at first, and I get now why why the confusion was that you'd taken the sphere, but when you're filming the sphere, you're at Jim's house. I'm at Jim's house, and that and from where I live, that's like eighty that's eighty miles away from here. Right. So 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 so, so Jim does not want to let anybody else touch his balls, basically. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's Jim is a, a he's a nice guy. He's a friendly guy, and he's he's welcoming. And he would you know he would let no, but I mean he at, will not let. It, yeah, let, and no one fact, can take I them. Put a deal on Facebook the other day, and I invited every anybody who wanted to go with me down there, and I okayed it with Jim, and I was going to take a crowd down there. I'll with get me a, to look I'll, at, I'll fly over. <laughs> I've got people right here in town, and nobody. You know how many people went? Nobody. I put it. on. I put it on Facebook. Like, yeah. if you want to go see something, a real mystery, let's go. You, you're welcome to come with me. I, do you know, I, I, I know a couple of guys that would gladly go with you. I don't know how far they live away from you, but I'm sure my good friend uh, Rich Giordano from Goof on Radio would definitely um, want to see this sphere. And I'm oh, sure yeah. o- Osvaldo Franco, um, who you've seen me interview from New York, he's right. he, he, he got me on to you. He, he, the video that we did together, he starts speaking, and he's quite excited about uh, the sphere. That you have. I think he, 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 he's under the impression that there is still 12 of them that, on the ranch, uh, but they're, they're all missing. Uh, they're somewhere, but they're not... We have one in possession, and the other eleven, we we kind of know where they're at, but we're not certain as to what's going on with them. Were they different sizes, or were they all the same size? And they were all the same size. They looked, as far as I understand it, they were identical. They all looked the same. And uh, you know what was funny was I, I I listened to the Bob the Joe Rogan Bob Lazar interview. Yep. And Bob Lazar had mentioned that he replaced a guy down on Area 51 that had cut into a sphere and exploded. It exploded and killed him. Yeah. 
And I was like, I was just, I wondered, I was like, maybe that's one of these spheres. Well, that, I don't I think saw. it was the sphere, was it? I wasn't, didn't he cut into the reactor, what the actual... Yeah, the the ball, the sphere was a reactor, and it sits inside of a plate, some sort of a plate or something like okay. that. That's how they activate it. It's just a sphere, and then when they set it into the plate, it activates it or something like that. So, I I, I haven't seen on the close ups that you've and you've been very open with this, and you've shown that there is kind of like a ring, and it all it's not a neatly cut ring. I have to say, it looks. Um, it looks almost like it's been scribed in, if you know what I mean. Right, or broke out, or something like that. Uh, it looks like it was just broken out, but it's a perfect ring, and 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 it goes. Looks like it goes plumb through the sphere, like it's a sleeve that goes all the way through the sphere. And on the other side of the sphere is there's one that matches it, same size looking, you know. So I'm thinking it's got to be like a sleeve in the sphere. But you, have you ever thought that it could be how it was one. made? Have you, have you ever like wondered maybe that's how it was made and those are, that they've closed it off? I'm not. I'm, no, you, it's, you know, I, sh I showed it to my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is a machinist, and, and I've worked with him at the machine shop before. And I mean, and I've worked in metal and in industrial applications of of metal stuff like this, and. There's no grind marks. There's no well marks. There's no seams on this thing, and uh, and it doesn't look like a machined opening. And uh, and I and I but I don't know that much about plasma cutting. Was the reason that I, I showed it to him, and he said, you know, I said uh, they probably had some plasma cutters that could cut something that precise and 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 that tight. But he goes, as old as this thing is, it's 20, 30 years old. They probably didn't even have that technology at the time. To even be able to make a cut like that, right. so so yeah. even on a machinist standpoint, it's still pretty, still pretty freaky. And he said even today they wouldn't be able to cut through a solid ball with a plasma cutter at that depth. So, Are there any markings on it? There's there's no markings on it, and in fact, I had a Tesla coil and we shot a hundred thousand volts of electricity into it, and we did that to see if it. Because I wanted to see if it would like recharge it. You should so. have videoed that. You should have videoed that. Have you videoed well, I, that? I know, but the thing that's the bad thing is I, I got a room full of people and nobody wants to hold the camera. Right. <laughs> okay. Like, I need more ufology friends because <laughs> the people I've got sitting there drinking beer and talk, telling stories, <laughs> you know. So, and I'm sitting here doing all this stuff with the sphere and nobody's even interested. Everybody's over there just doing their own thing, you know. Well, I'm sure so we'll I'm get we'll get thing. some traction. We'll 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 uh, we'll see what we can <laughs> do there. If I lived closer, I would be all over that ball, that sphere. I yeah, would, yeah. I, you know, I would. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. anybody would be, you know. And it was like this is amazing. How much and, does it uh, weigh? It weighs just a little over fifty pounds. Right. Okay. And and the bed spear, I think, weighed twenty two pounds or something like that. So it looks yeah, bigger. This is a lot bigger than the bed spear. Yeah. But it. But and I had never heard of the bet sphere. Uh, we, we we were showing pictures of the sphere and talking about the sphere and the way the sphere moved and stuff like that. And somebody somebody made the remark, "You're just trying to duplicate the bet sphere." And I'm going, "What is this guy talking about?" And so I started research. I researched the bet sphere, and it shocked me that that there was a sphere similar to this doing the same sort of things. And I was amazed. I'm like you. I checked completely into the best sphere, listened to the whole story, and was like fascinated at the similarity between this sphere and and their sphere. The, yeah, I mean, I don't know really. You don't really hear much about the best sphere now. Not even about the family or anything. Kind of went silent. And I think January of 2019, uh, there was a. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of the podcast, but th they were actually contacted by a Betts family member, and uh, and uh, and apparently Jerry Spear uh, is still alive. From what I understand, I think Terry Terry has passed away. Uh, but this was a family member of the Betts Spear in January of 2019, and and uh, she actually talked to the podcast, and they're they're still not interested in. 
they still they still have they still know the whereabouts of the spear, but it's, apparently it stopped doing a lot of the stuff that it was doing. It's still in the family, but well, yeah. Apparently, when it came back from the navy, it it was never uh, the same again. Yeah, they damaged it or swapped it. Yeah, so I, I, I suppose um, with your friend, uh, that may be the, the the fear of giving it to somebody else that it may, may be replaced or not the same. Um, I have an idea. Are you going to be going back out there? Uh, yes, I, I do go out there from time to time, and I always try to film something while I'm out there. Is uh, there, the gym. Is there a local um, basketball court, you know, indoors? Well, you would have to, yeah, you would have to take it into town, and then probably get approval from somebody to to use it, you know, to use the basketball court or something like that. So, do you know what I'm getting at? I, I I think it'd be great if you could get that on a big, if you put it out, way out in the middle of a court, and you yeah, you go out, maybe play some music or whatever, and uh, film and see what happens, see what it does, because I. I I've seen it moving in the. Is it is it in a kitchen when it's moving around on the tile? I mean, it's going over them tiles. I can see that. Um, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a tile floor, and they're not really smooth. And you can hear it crunching over uh, sand that's on the floor that's being tracked in from outside. Yeah. You know, so it's certainly not a, a smooth glass smooth surface for it to roll on. It. You know, I'm surprised it can roll at all. Yeah. Do, uh, do you kind of have to surface? push it to get it to? to go to start yeah, you can't put it down yeah it won't just move on its own you have to give it a little push and and then once you give it a little push you know and, and that's how we first noticed something was going on with it was my son was sitting there playing with it and then he played with it and then he walked off and it was just kind of rolling around and and we were sitting there talking four minutes later it's still rolling okay and i and i told some of the boys i was with i was going now I said, you know, that thing is still rolling. It's been like four minutes, and everybody's going like, yeah, it's definitely been like. And I said, somebody should have a camera probably recording this, you know. So, and, so sorry, what was your friend's name again? I should have wrote that down. Jim. Jim, Jim Martin, yeah. yeah. So, so, so Jim didn't actually know that it moved. And no, he didn't. He'd had the spear, and he has a stand that somebody built for him to set it on. Yeah, I've seen that. It's and, looks uh, amazing. Yeah, to him, it's just an artifact. He loves the spear. He meditates with the spear, you know, and and, uh, and like I said, he, he carries it with him all, a lot of the time, and he goes camping. He sits outside by the campfire. He'll bring the spear out at night like when he's UFO watching the stuff. It's like a friend. But he never had to set it down on the floor and watch it roll, and he didn't know anything about the bed spear until I showed him the video. I showed him the video of the bed spear, and he was like shocked that there was such a spear, you know? Have you done any uh, experiments with sunlight on it, like taking it outside and see how it reacts or anything like that? Well, he, he sets it outside a lot in, in the sun, you know? And uh, and I noticed it does stay hot long time like you could take it inside and it's and it has heat for a long time you, i mean you can barely touch it you bring it put it in the shade put it in the ac and uh, and then touch it 15 minutes later and it's still so hot you can't touch it you know so is there any it, is, yeah have you felt anything any sort of like vibration or i have i know the bed spirit you can shake it they, you could hear stuff moving inside it uh, not this one. You, I can shake this one. I don't hear anything inside it. I don't hear anything sloshing like fluid of any sort. It doesn't sound like it's fluid. It doesn't feel like there's fluid in it. Uh, Feels hollow. But I know when it, yeah, but it, it rocks back and forth when even when it stops rolling like it has a, some sort of heavy fluid in it. And you'd have to think this one couldn't be water because this thing weighs 50 pounds. So it, it would almost have to be... And like something like mercury or something like that, some really heavy liquid in it. Right. The I've seen in one of the videos. Is it your uh, grandson? Um, and you playing some music? Yeah, that's my son. He was son. Now he's Jim's got an organ there in the house, and my son likes to get over there. And Jim just lets him. He is not by no means a musician. 
<laughs> no, he, I, he's a talented little lad. Terrible sound when he's playing on it. So, uh, he he may watch I this had, one I day. Was examining the sphere, and my son was over banging on that organ, and all of a sudden the sphere vibrated like, like a tuning fork, and and it scared the hell out of me. And I thought it was fixing to explode or something. Because, like I said, I you know. I'm still wondering if this ain't some kind of a military, like explosive, something that comes out of a cannon. Maybe it's got explosive in it, you know. So I'm still kind of cautious with this thing. I don't know for sure what it is. I know it could be very damn dangerous. And so when that thing vibrated when he was playing on that organ, it scared the living crap out of me. And, and <laughs> I thought this thing was fixing to blow up. Did it vibrate in the video? Or were you trying to get, recreate that and it didn't happen? On we the were re trying to, yeah, we were trying to recreate that effect. We were trying to figure out what would make, you know, find the keys or whatever that would, would make it do that. And, uh, and we never could find it. We never could duplicate it. We're still trying to figure out exactly what would make it do it or what pitch or whatever. And that would be something for TTSA to, like, do some researching on. Yeah. You know, um. So, what did you send TTSA exactly? I just said, uh, I sent them pictures, I sent them video of it. <clears throat> I sent everything I knew about it, how, that it, how much it weighs, and, and, and uh, they just wanted the specifics on it, so. I, I've seen one of the like response, them. I've seen one response from them. Um, is that all they sent you? Yeah, that's all they sent me so far. I sent them another one with the same videos that I sent you. Uh, I sent them links to the video, and, and, and then I never got a response, and I thought, well, they, they probably don't want to go chasing links, so I sent them the same videos that I sent you, that, and what? I'm waiting on a response from them right now. So We need Tom DeLong to get to, to come over with his guitar and start playing to it and see what happens. Right, right. That would be a video in itself. Do you think, you mentioned meta metamaterials, um, are, are you thinking that this could potentially be made from that? I'm thinking, I've seen an, I've seen it do enough strange things that it, it certainly warrants further investigation, uh, the type of investigation that I'm not capable of. And like I said, I'm, it's not my sphere, so I don't get to dictate what we do with it. Uh, I'm kind of a go-between between everybody else and Jim. And you have to understand, Jim's wife is really creeped out by this thing. Jim is uh, in his later 70s, and if something happens to Jim, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this thing didn't end up in a dumpster because she is creeped out by it. She doesn't like it. And uh, if Jim suddenly died of a heart attack or something like that, God, I, this thing could just disappear in a dumpster, really. Seriously, that's, how, that's where we're at. Well, maybe you need to have a little uh, chat and just say, look, you know, if you, if you ever want to give the sphere up, I will look after it. I mean, I, I trust you'd look <laughs> after it. Well, I would too, but, you know, I don't get to make those decisions. <laughs> no, no, that, that is true. Um, well, let's hope that, that Jim lives a, a long, long life. I mean, he's only set, is he, he's uh, in his 70? Is he 70? Yeah, he's in his 70s, you know. So, like I said, he he was a producer for Bob Dylan. Yeah, you know, that, that's amazing. He was concert out in California with Bob Dylan. So that's, that's you know, that's back in the 60s probably, you know. It would be great. Um, and everybody head over to, to Ronnie's, Ronnie Dawson's channel and uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, but it would be great if you could do an interview with um, with him. And just get his, get his, right, get his full right. story. That I think that'd be fantastic. I just sit down, yeah, with, and... sit down, you and the... And the sphere, and just have a, a conversation. Um, I think that'd be a really good watch. Um, oh yeah. You you mentioned um, in our emails back and forth that you've encountered things. So I know you've encountered the uh, the UFO, but there's a video where you're going into your attic and you're looking for something because something's uh, happening. Yeah, there was yeah, I had an alien home invasion at my house here in Ranger, Texas. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That was a that's another chapter of the story, man. Did you see anything? And, uh, or did you just hear noises and assume that it's alien? Or 
Oh no, I, I saw him up close and personal. I saw this thing from about probably 10 feet away. And then they got up underneath my bed and was shaking it while they had me paralyzed on it. And uh, they were lifting the whole bed up and slamming it back to the floor. And I was paralyzed on the bed. <laughs> was it, so, and, uh, so this is when you were in bed, this happened? Yeah, I had just I had just laid in bed. And in fact, I hadn't even closed my eyes yet. It was like they were waiting on me to go in there and lay down, and then they hit me. And and it was really weird because you couldn't feel anything holding you in bed, but as soon as you tried to move, it was like uh, like there was a 600-pound gorilla sitting on your chest, you know. And, and I could kind I could, I could look around with my eyes. I could move my head a little bit from side to side. I could see my cat running around in the house, avoiding the aliens, and he jumped up in bed with me. I could see all of this. And I could see the aliens running around in my living room, and I, I seen one run across a vertical wall, and and I was hoping it was squirrels or raccoons or something like that. And then when I seen one run across a vertical wall, it, and the night before we had seen a UFO and shot a shot a laser light at it, so I, right, I think yeah. maybe retaliation or something for shooting at their UFO or something. I don't know. They were checking it, but actually. I kind of think they were checking the laser out. Once once they got to where the laser was being kept, the uh, the invasion stopped and they left. When you say so invasion, they, did you did you feel invaded? Did you feel or did you feel under threat or did you? Every every cabinet and every drawer in my whole house was wide open uh, when they finally released me from the bed. And uh, they had broken, there's there some dishes and stuff they had knocked over. They had knocked over a lamp at the computer desk and broke it. And uh, like I said, they had just like, uh, they were definitely searching for something. Because okay. I was, I was going to ask you, and don't take this the wrong way, if you may have been dreaming, but if you woke up and all the drawers were open, um, did, did the little bastards steal anything? <laughs> did they steal no. anything? No, they're... You know, it wasn't like I was, I had ever went to sleep. I had just laid in bed and then they, they were, it's like they were waiting on me to lay down. And, they, and once I got in that bed, they froze me in it. Uh, I don't know. I think they, they use, they use something that separates uh, your ability to send signals from your brain to your muscles. And uh, because uh, I could think, I could think and I could formulate thought. And I, I decided at one point I was going to break free from this force and go kill these little bastards. And, uh, and there was a golf club in the corner and I was going to grab it and I was going to go to town on these guys. And I, when I tried to break free this time, I fought it so hard that it, it felt like I almost had a heart attack. It, it, I mean, it, it hurt my breathing. It hurt my heart. My chest felt like it was about to blow up. And, and I just lay back in bed and I thought I'm completely screwed. They're going to do whatever they want to. Nothing. My body did nothing when I tried to move. Did anybody then, else experience this in the house? Yeah, this was this was right here in the house the night after we had shot a laser at the UFO. Yeah, did anybody and, else uh, experience the, the 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 not being able to move in the house? Was anybody else in the house? No, nah, at that at that time I was living here by myself and I had a cat here at the house and I and I noticed that he was on the bed running around like it wasn't affecting him at all. <clears throat> I couldn't move for nothing, but he was up there beside me on the bed moving around like he wasn't affected at all. So it, it was, you know, that was kind of mysterious. Was. But they came in there and started shaking the bed. He took off out of the room running for his life. And I didn't see anything chasing him. So, but I was just stuck in there and they were up underneath my bed and, the, and I could hear clawing on the mattress. And they tore through my box springs. You could see scratch marks under the box springs. There's a piece of wires, wire in there that goes over the box spring. You can see where they had grabbed it and pulled on it so hard that they had bent the wire. Like they were trying to get through me through the bottom of the mattress uh, for some reason, man. And it was, like I said, they were bouncing that whole bed up and down with me on it. And I'm a big guy, man. I, at that time, I probably weighed 280. And uh, they were bouncing me, the bed, and everything. I mean, these little things weren't about 18 inches tall. They, they were like a, they had a face like an old man and they had a body more like a, it had an exoskeleton on it, like an insect. Uh, and it had thorns on this, on this, on the exo, it was almost like a body armor on a, on a human looking thing. So it looked and like even an, the body armor had like thorns on it. So it looked like an old man with an insect body. Yeah. 
and it, and it had it had an exoskeleton on it. It had thorns on, like on a body armor that even covered his the top part of his head, and and his eyes he didn't have his eyes his eyes were squinted, like the little bit of light I had in my house was bright on him. Like he would have been better off like in total darkness. It seemed like it seemed like what little light there was uh, was almost hurting his eyes, and there was three of them all together. And I noticed he, he ran on all fours and he stood up on two back legs and his front arms were so long they almost still reached all the way to the floor and, uh, and they looked almost like in, some sort of insect arms. But okay. he definitely had a humanoid looking face. Did um, so, were there all the drawers in the house, So it, was it everything in the house? Was the fridge open? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I think... I think the fridge was, it wasn't completely wide open, but you could see where it had been pulled open. And every, all the cabinets, even the ones above the sink and stuff were open, and all the drawers were pulled out. And there was like... There were no man, beers. Man, I mean, there were no beers missing from that fridge. No, I didn't see anything missing. That, those aliens, they love a beer. No, there was nothing. There was nothing missing. You know, I thought, well, they got the, they got the laser because... I, the laser was in a gun cabinet that was locked, and, and somehow or another they even managed to unlock it. They unlocked the gun cabinet, and then when I come back in and seen the gun cabinet unlocked, I was really frustrated because I'd been going on an alien hunt with a golf club, and I had a loaded shotgun in there, and I'm going, man, I could have had a shotgun. You know, here I am chasing aliens in my house with a golf club, and there's a, a shotgun available. The reason I didn't go for the shotgun was because I didn't want to go unlock the cabinet. The gun cabinet but when when i came back into the bedroom looking around and closing drawers and cabinets and stuff i realized that man they they had gotten in there too and unlocked it so they took so the laser to grab a shotgun they took your laser no it was there it was oh. still in the case exactly where it was at so but when they got to the gun cabinet where the laser was being capped uh, everything stopped and then all of a sudden it was like when they released me this was the weird part I guess they released when they released the force that was holding me in that bed. My body jumped up. I cursed real loud. I grabbed the golf club out of the corner and I was angry and frustrated as hell, fixing to kill some aliens. Now this I had tried to do five minutes earlier and couldn't do it. But when they released me, all of a sudden it was like this got processed in my brain and my body was like a robot acting without my permission and it just freaked me out. Because it was like something I had tried to do earlier. My body was doing it automatically without me wanting to do it. And uh, it was just a weird feeling. You can imagine trying to do something, not being able to do it. And all of a sudden you, you just do it later. You know? So in the video, you, you're in the, are you in the attic? No, I'm underneath the house. Well, so was that the I'm next, the house. was that the next day? Yeah, that was, that was, uh, I think this was quite a while later. This was, uh, I didn't have a really, I went in there the next day with a gun, with a loaded gun and a light, and I had a buddy outside backing me up. I said, man, I can't live in this place without knowing that they ain't nested up underneath my house. And uh, so I, I loaded my gun, and I crawled up underneath the house, and I checked things out to make sure they wasn't underneath there. Because uh, I can't live here peacefully knowing that these things are up underneath there. So I had to check everything out. And uh, when I got up underneath there, and like I said, there was a hole clawed through my floor. That when I came up from work that day, the cat, when the, the cat in the house was missing through the hole, and I thought that, and I just assumed the cat had 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 made the hole. So I I had to I when I retrieved the cat, I patched the hole up and then went to bed. And uh, and like I said, when I went on the search of the house. The, the metal tin that I had used to patch a hole, they had pulled it up, man. It was like, and I'm not so sure they hadn't, they didn't make the hole in the first place. But this was heavy 30-year tin that we put on our roofs down here in Texas. It's tough stuff. And I had some screws in it, and they had pulled the screws right out of the wood floor, and the tin was bent where they had pulled it up to get back through the hole. So, and I almost, that looked like their exit point. And, and, it, and then it made me think that they, they're probably the ones that made the hole. I had blamed it on the cat, but this is a declawed cat. How you would, how a declawed cat could chew a hole through a floor, it, you know, it's just about impossible. So, 
I just I thought it was a cat, but I, after seeing that was their their escape point, I kind of put two and two together and figured that that's where they they dug their way in and they escaped the same way. So did you report this one to move on? Uh, no, I didn't. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. And I thought about calling the police, and then I thought I can't I can't do it. I call the police over here. They're not going to find any aliens. They're going to yeah. If you call, think I'm under the influence of drugs or something, and yeah, if you call the police and tell them there's some old men in in with, with spiky insect right. bodies, then you know you, you you may end up um in a straitjacket. So no, I get I yeah, get why. House, you... Yeah, my house. They probably thought I'd ransack my own house. I'm on some kind of drugs, you know. So God only knows where that would have went. But I would have loved to call the police and try to get some physical evidence of whatever was running around in my house, you know. It, it sounds to me though like the didn't want to cause you any harm they just wanted to rob you but didn't steal anything well they were just looking at the laser i think i shot the laser around the ufo i shot the laser upon their craft a four light craft the night before and uh i think and then all of a sudden the thing my buddy was with me so there was two of us that seen it and i shot the laser on it and he had a camera and he was supposed to be recording it and uh, I looked over at him and said, I hope you're getting this on the camera. And he was just standing there gawking at this thing. He had never seen a UFO before. He was just standing there with his mouth open looking at it. Right. And I said, dude, you're supposed to be recording this. And uh, we rushed for the camera, and the thing just blinked out, man, like it was never there. All four big old lights that's probably stretched 100 yards just blinked out. I get that because... Um... I was at my mum and dad's once and this massive light in the sky was moving and I was like, what is that? And I was like talking to my dad and it turns out it was the ISS, but I didn't film it. I did not know it was the ISS and I didn't film it and I could have filmed it, but I was too busy looking at it because I was kind of like, wow, oh, yeah. what is that? Yeah. But it was just, it was just yeah. the ISS, but I get why people sometimes would not film it because you're in that moment. It's an experience. It's like you don't you don't think to just get your phone out and film because you miss so much as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We we watch the ISS all the time, and I actually I have an ISS tracker, and uh, so I've shown the wife and the kids, and we track whenever it's coming over, and we go outside and watch it. Uh, but so you know, yeah, this thing was a whole lot closer than I ISS. And, and the four individual lights, you can see that these are huge illumination areas. Uh, they're not small, bright lights are large areas of illumination. And this is like, it's almost like you're looking through a porthole of a giant craft that's got some kind of a bluish white illumination on the inside of it. And, and I kind of think that it's a byproduct of the craft staying idle too long. I think if the craft stays idle too long, these things come on. It's like it generates too much power, and, and it's like uh, it's like a it's like a byproduct of the craft staying idle too long. Yeah, it's been my observation. I I really would like you to go back out to that ranch and get some more um, proof of that sphere, um, because, because when what intrigues me is that you when you say. You don't know if it's alien. It could be man-made. You've no idea. And it's the fact that the guy tried to take the sphere back as well. You know, the story is very... It's exciting. It's an exciting story. I just hope that he does manage to keep hold of that sphere and he doesn't give it give it to somebody and, you know, get it in the wrong hands. Right, you know, and... Uh... And like I said, I think step one is getting an X-ray truck that can actually come to the sphere, and uh, there's lots of testing. They can they can test the shell uh, thickness, and they can look inside the sphere and see what's uh, inside of it. We know what they found in the best sphere, and uh, I'm I got called by a physicist from India who had seen the video, and he said he said it's an atomic battery, and they they found they found them, and and he's examined them in India. And he said, do not, he said, whatever you do, do not cut into it. He said, he said, it could, 
He said the elements inside there are not stable in Earth's environment, and it will like go thermal nuclear on you. It will explode. What and that's th- what happened to that. You know, the sphere out there, Bob Lazar. These guys cut. They cut into it and it exploded and killed that guy. And they hired Bob Lazar to replace him. You know, on Area Fifty One. Yeah. Is, what you th- so you you think it's possible that Element One Fifteen could be in that sphere? Yeah, and you know they said that uh, they said the elements in the bit sphere they thought was like Element One Forty, so it was even even more dangerous than One Fifteen. So. So you know, I don't know. You know, it would be that would be the first step into seeing if this is really something worth investigating. Or I know there are things like ball mills, and I, you know, I've been looking, trying to figure out if this is not a UFO. What is it? And I, I, have, and I have come up with nothing. You know, uh, I think is, is it from a ball mill? Is the, it a giant ball bearing? What is it? You know, the closest Does it have an explanation. Yeah, the... I've seen it. I've seen it do enough to know that it's weird. It's it's more than explainable weird the closest thing i've seen to it and it's it's is a is a globe how they make a globe but they don't make big metal globes like that not back then either they were i think they were paper mache and uh, concrete um but the 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 ring around the top is the only thing that i could see and i thought that and if there's one on the other side that little ring is almost like a mold and i'm not saying that to debunk this at all far from it i'm just stating that that's the only thing that i've come close to uh when i'm looking at your sphere and seeing the little ring around the top but it's made out of metal and it and how much does it weigh again uh, yeah, fifty pounds, a little yeah, over fifty pounds. So, and it's uh, how old? Gosh, it has to be twenty to thirty years old. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure um, maybe some scr- some some I can't speak today. Some subscribers uh, may have ideas, and by all means, leave them in the comments. Go over right. to 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 Ronnie's channel. Uh, we're all trying to find out what this is, you especially. Yeah. Um, it would be kind of gutting, and uh, if it did get debunked, I think for the owner especially. Right. Yeah, and you know he's he's willing. You know he let me do some testing on it. You know, so as long as the sphere don't doesn't disappear, I don't think he would mind us doing any sort of testing on it. You know, as long as he's involved in the process and. And they don't have the sphere to take off with it, you know, for an extended period of time. So, yeah. And said an X-ray machine out there, they, the portable X-ray to that to his property. He's already agreed to be willing to do something like that. So, I mean, the, the sphere would never leave the property, and uh, you know, it's behind lock and key right now, and then it's a good, safe place for it. You know, I, I, I'm like you. I like to take it out in the public. I've tried to talk him into taking it to Alien Con. You know, yeah. I've tried to talk him into taking it to the Roswell UFO Festival, you know, and he's not quite willing to take it out in the public. You know, I'm like, let's get it out in public. Let's get some attention to it. Let's, you know, let people look at it, hold it. And, uh, you know, I, I, he's just, a, he's afraid somebody will take it from him and it will disappear. Are you going to take it to, are you, you going to take it? Are you going to go out to Area 51? They've been trying to. I'm actually supposed to be part of a, 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 a don't raid Area 51 event that's, that's going to air out of Las Vegas over there. I'm supposed to do like a podcast or something like saying that. Don't, saying don't. Saying don't. My wife said I can't go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would be allowed to go either, even if I lived close enough. Um, you've heard, well, you've heard of Red Ocean Forest, haven't you? Yes, yes. Yeah, I will be going there, uh, but that's yeah. that's not under lock and key. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's it, it's it's a weird thing to do. I, I think that it's probably going to be, um, as my good friend Osvaldo Franco said, uh, a lot of people that will get sunburned, run out of water, and realize it was a bad idea, and 
and just go out. <laughs> they'll end up going home, or they'll end up going to hospital from uh, severe sunburn. Wait. Yeah, you have to you have to realize if a million people drive to Rachel, Nevada, there's not enough gas in Rachel, Nevada for everybody to get back to Vegas. Mm. Uh, there's not enough water. There's not enough food. There's not enough motels and places for people to sleep or use a restroom. You know that that is not a place that you would want a million people at by no means. In fact, the whole county has 52 people in it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's gonna co- it's gonna cost the government a lot of money. Um, probably the cleanup alone. Well, we've been hearing that they're going to block the roads. They're going to shut the highways down to it so that even if you wanted to go out there, you wouldn't be able to go. So, I'm sure they'll find a way. Well, then the other day, the the guy who put it on Facebook pulled out of it, Maddie. Yeah, I saw that. He pulled, yeah, he withdrew from the event. So, I'd like to get him on here. Yeah, I need to get, I need to get in touch with that guy. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm I, we've been going about an hour, so I, I'm. Will you come back on, Ronnie? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have a little bit of a chat to you after the show, anyway. Um. But I have you got anything you'd like to leave us with? And my subscribers get them over to your channel. Can you? Can you? All yours. Right, uh, I have a, I have a book on Barnes and Noble called the Ronnie Dawson UFO Story. I haven't promoted it a whole lot, but I just wanted to get the story and write it in case something happened to me. I have a Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel where I always keep the latest videos and stuff there, uh, so you can uh, subscribe to that channel. I think I've got like over a million two hundred thousand views on it, so, <laughs> and I don't do much there. It just pretty much goes on its own, you know. <laughs> so yeah, you need so, to do yeah, more. You yeah, and uh, you can. I have a Facebook, uh, the Ronnie Dawson Experience page, where it's like a fan page where uh, anything I'm doing, I, I keep posted on there. If you want to find out what's going on with Ronnie Dawson, you can see it there as well. I will leave all the links for you, Ronnie, in the description, so the guys can head up, head over um, to your right, social yeah. media and check out your book. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on Alien Addict, and I hope you'll come on again. Uh, like I say, we will speak after the show, but I will say, guys, hit that thumbs up because it helps the video out. Subscribe, and good night, God bless. Mind the bugs, don't bite. I'm Alien Addict, and this is Ronnie Dawson. Thank maybe, you. Maybe we should call it the Dawson Sphere. <laughs>